Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. In this video I want to cover the 10 things that I did while looking for a used Tesla. Now we're not talking about buying a new Tesla because that's easy. You go to the website, you customize it the way you want. Some of the things will apply but um, in this we're talking about looking locally for a used Tesla whether it be at a dealership or whether it be private and I'm going to go over both ends of it. I'm going to go over what I looked for and uh, the steps that I took in order to buy our Tesla. So tip number one, have the money to actually buy the Tesla. Whether you're financing or whether you're buying with cash, make sure you figured out what that looks like. A lot of times people will overlook taxes, title, registration, all of those fees that come along with it. Also, the other thing that's common in overlooking it is how much your insurance is gonna go up. Now, uh, for three cars in our household, our insurance each month, it, would break down to be roughly $180 a month. So make sure you actually have the money before you go and buy the Tesla. Also, along with that, <laughs> don't go look at them um, unless you're looking to move into one now. Uh, Laura jokes about that, but yeah, I, I totally went and started looking at one because we had the money and uh, ended up buying one. So I guess you could say that my emotional quotient was low on the Tesla end. If you're gonna buy privately, you're gonna have to figure out what bank will finance it. And then also a huge thing you know, to look at is the interest rate. What interest rate are you getting now with you know, everything going on right now, interest is practically free. So getting a, a car loan, you can usually get some pretty low interest rate. Putting into consideration though that insurance part, cause that really is a big deal. And it's hard to find companies that want to insure uh, Teslas because they're still kind of like a, a specialty product. I'm really looking forward to the Tesla insurance. I keep checking up on that all the time because it's gonna be a lot less. Also, before you start looking, have a price in mind. Have what you've decided you want to spend on it and don't deviate from that unless you can find somebody that you can talk down. Laura and I had a price that we wanted to hit and we were able to work with the guy that sold us the Tesla so that it got down to the price that we wanted. Now it was a steal of a deal for us and uh, the guy owned like three different Teslas so I think he was just trying to get rid of the one that he wasn't using at that time but you know, we ended up being the beneficiaries of that. Number two, I briefly mentioned this, but check dealerships. See what dealerships have Teslas on the lot. Now you do want to be cautious because a Tesla like on a lot, on a used car lot, is going to try and sell you a Tesla without full self-driving or any of the other packages for the exact same price. And I don't know, I didn't have an experience where they hiked the price, but I did have an experience a lot of the times where I wanted full self-driving in there. They made it sound like it was, and then I checked it when I was test driving it and they didn't have full self-driving. And so that's a big thing. The other thing to be sure of is there's a good chance too that the dealer, depending on how they got it, if they got it at an auction, the full self-driving won't transfer over because it wasn't a person-to-person -person sell where that person put that they were selling that Tesla to you. Um, if you want more information about that when you're going through the process, make sure you call Tesla. I did that, I gave him the VIN number. I said, hey, I'm looking to buy this. I just wanna make sure that um, premium connectivity and full self-driving are gonna transfer over to me because I don't wanna pay for them and then find out I have to pay for them again. That was a big deal to us. We wanted the full self-driving. Number three, if you have a service center near you, now this might be difficult during this time, um, but when we were able to drive it, we took it to a service center, had them look for any immediate damage to the battery, other things like that, the wheels, anything that might come up in the cell uh, that we wanted to have checked out. If you're at a dealership, they can typically get those things serviced right away, but if you're doing it private, you wanna make sure that you do that. Number four, if you're on the test drive, make sure you're getting a good history of the vehicle. You wanna find out what they used it for. A uh, person like me who's using it to commute um, you want to find out if they're doing highway miles, if they're doing stop and go, how many miles a day they typically drove, any things that they noticed with it, check the alignment. You want to make sure the alignment's good. Those can be added costs uh, when you get the Tesla. So you want to make sure that you do that, get a comprehensive history of it. You also want to make sure that there's no hidden things in it. Um, there's sometimes when you're buying private and they say that it's a clean title, you find out that it's actually a salvage title. And the problem with the salvage title is you can't supercharge. For me, that was a no-go. I didn't want to be stuck driving back and forth through the valley and then not be able to supercharge. And also I wanted to be able to take it on road trips. You can't do that if you can't supercharge. So make sure you check those things. Number five, come with questions that you need to ask. Questions that you want to ask are, can these things be transferred? You want to find out if they can transfer those things. Now I told you talking to Tesla is probably the best way. 
the person selling it to you probably just wants to sell it. So you might not know if it can actually transfer. So make sure you give them a call. It's easy. You can just give them in and they'll let you know whether those things can transfer over. It's a lot easier if you have the owner with you. Number six, I'm not going to do my fingers on this one, but number six, you want to typically have one of these things. If you're getting a Tesla Model 3, have one of these key cards with you. It's that way you can program it to you. So I would bring one of those with me. They're super cheap. I wish I would have known this before. And uh, you can reset the system and before you sell it. You do want to wipe it. You don't want the person that you're buying it from to be able to unlock it. So obviously your phone can be your key card, but sometimes it takes a while to transfer over ownership. For us, it took uh, almost 15 hours, I think it was in order for it to transfer ownership. So we had to have one of those cards and the guy can't f couldn't find it. His wife had them both and it ended up causing a little bit more of a time delay until we could actually leave with the car because we needed to either have his cell phone or have one of those key cards. So make sure that you plan ahead for that. Number seven, uh, I briefly mentioned it, but uh, Rich Rebuilds, I watch a lot of his videos and one of the things he recommended is bring a mirror with you so you can check for any leaks. Uh, yes, there is coolant that can leak out um, under where the battery is. And you also wanna make sure that there's no large gashes in the battery. If somebody decided to take it off-roading and it's working at the moment, but they got a giant gash in the bottom, you don't wanna have to replace that battery. That's gonna be one of the most expensive things that you could possibly do. And you also wanna find out whether it's still under warranty. Ours is under warranty. We've actually had it serviced, I think three times now for different things. The window being one of them, both uh, the upper and lower control arm. On the passenger side of the car, I did a video on the squeaking noise that was the control arms. Seems like those are gonna be the most common things, but bring something with you so you can actually check under it. Be meticulous. Look at every single part of the car. Look at the interior, look for scratches, look for dents. Look for anything that might get you to be able to get the price lower. The reason I say that is it can come back to bite you. If you have some damage and you're like, oh, that's not a big deal. Later when you're trying to sell it, or you know, maybe you know your spouse hadn't seen it yet or something, they might not be okay with that damage. So you wanna make sure that the car is in good shape when you're doing that. Number nine, if the car has bad tires, make sure you point that out. You know what, Tesla tires can be pretty expensive. You know, you're looking at typically around a thousand bucks, 1200 bucks to replace all four of your tires. And if um, you have all wheel drive, you're gonna have to do that regardless of if one tire is bad or all of the tires are bad. That's the, the nature of the beast when you own an all wheel drive car. So make sure you check the tires meticulously. Also, we'll give you an idea of what type of wear there is. If you look up on, you know, online, you can find discount tire will have wear patterns. You can see if there's any alignment issues, any balancing issues. I looked at the tires extensively to make sure there was nothing like that when I drove it. And then also when I was test driving it, I make sure to let go of the hand or like go of the steering wheel to make sure it would go straight. So no alignment issues. <laughs> and this one applies to if you're married, right? So number 10 one apply to everyone. If you're a single guy looking to buy a car or a single gal, you know, it doesn't matter, right? You, you just run your finances by yourself, but make sure you and your wife are on the same page. You know, I, I definitely went and started looking at Teslas while Laura was in California. So it may, might not be the best way to do it, but I didn't buy the Tesla until she got home. She had a chance to look at it. She got a chance to test drive a few of them to see what she liked in it. But those are my uh, 10 things right there. Hopefully that helps you guys out if you're looking to buy a used Tesla. I know it helped me out a lot when I was going through the research process. So uh, look forward to you know hearing any comments. If you guys can think of anything else that I may have missed in this video, feel free to put them down there. I, I love constructive criticism, so uh, make sure you're you know subscribed if you want to see more of my videos, and uh, hit the like button if you liked the video. And we'll see you in the next one.